All right, in this video, we're going to talk about um, some other modeling tools that you can use in Rhino. Um, all these tools uh, can be found pretty easily. Um, if one of the uh, great components that I like is this model in place under component. Um, it allows you, once you get into it, to um, create that model on any uh, family category that you want. So. Uh, it'll have that properties of that family. So if it's a door, it'll want to be attached to a wall. Um, if it's a floor, it will allow for um, walls to be built on to it. So, so think about what you're doing and and select kind of wisely. Um, you know, there's all of these possibilities from topography to windows, to walls, to the stairs, so on and so forth. So we're just gonna call it a wall floor for now. This is just a demo to uh, let you see kind of how these uh, modeling tools work up here. So the first one I have of course is extrusion. These kind of follow in order. You have a blend, revolve, a sweep, and a swept blend. And you can see just kind of basically kind of how they're kind of uh, the possibilities. Um, but let's just walk you through it. So I'm going to hit extrusion and then I'm just going to hit say a cylinder, a circle, and I'm going to draw that on my uh, on a plane and just hit return or actually just click the checkbox. And you'll see that you get an object that starts to have some substance. You can start to pull it. You can start controlling it if you want very specific things or if we're in a um, where we had various levels, I'm sure we could then tie it to the levels. So then you finish the model. So it's that simple to create a cylinder, a cube, any kind of basic geometry. Okay, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna click and I actually got out of the uh, family I was editing. So I'm just gonna make them all in that same floor to uh, a family. So now let's do the blend. Blend's a little trickier, although I think once you get used to it, it's pretty simple. Um, so let's just create, we'll do kind of the inverse of this. Um, we're going to draw a circle, and that will be the bottom of uh, the form. And then we're going to edit the top, and we're just going to draw a, a uh, say, a square. Now the weird thing about this is that you're going to feel like, oh, I should put that up in space, but you don't really have to. All you have to do is hit check, and then now you can make it as tall as you'd like, and what it's doing is basically tweening between that square up above and that circle below. And if you want to edit, uh, that's not quite the right geometry. You just hit edit top and say that you really want it to be more like that. As long as you keep this a closed form, if I keep it open like that and say OK, it's going to give me this kind of error message. So you just have to make sure that you're always closing your geometry completely. So now it tweens between that. So you can see how you can start to get really complex forms pretty quickly. Um, OK, so let's move on to the next one. So Revolve. Uh, let's do, I'll just keep it simple, we'll say it's a uh, rectangle, and then the axes uh, can be anything, uh, you can follow kind of a, a line that's on your geometry or maybe something slightly off, and what it does is it tries to revolve that geometry around that axis, so again, you can see um, how you can get rather complex forms rather quickly. Okay, let's do another one, a uh, sweep. So in this one, uh, it's you, you draw a path and then you also draw uh, a profile. So uh, you could have one already drawn and you just pick it, or you can sketch one. So we'll just sketch I uh, always like to use the spline because it adds complexity very simply. Because I think it's important for you to understand that in Revit world, if you know the right tool to use, you actually can get complex geometry. 
Um, Alright, so I think it's moved me on to now doing the profile, so we'll just draw a rectangle. Oh, okay. I was wrong. Let's get rid of the rectangle. And now we're going to um, edit the profile. So now we're going to draw what we want it to sweep. And it's swept. Easy enough now to, um, to edit. I just go in and edit the sweep. And I can pick this geometry and perhaps it needs to move or grow or change completely what it's doing. And then I could also edit the profile and perhaps I want something to be more triangular. So I just delete that. And once I say final OK, it will actually show you that geometry. Pretty cool. Okay, last one. Uh, swept blend. So we'll sketch. Uh, that's pretty boring. Let's try something else. that one. Okay, so this one's a little different. I know I have a lot going on here, but just kind of follow along. Yeah, that's probably a good view. It has uh, kind of a plane created at the end and a, a plane at the beginning that kind of shows you uh, the, the beginning and end points. So once I say OK on that, check that box, I can now create a profile on either end. So uh, this is when, you know, when this sweep it only takes that one profile and it just extrudes it along your path. Whereas this one gives you a little bit more control where you can edit and say uh, on this side perhaps I want a circle and on this side perhaps I want it to blend to uh, a rectangle this gives you that option. Pretty cool. Alright, so uh, now let's start to use that. Uh, we're going to be, I mean, okay, the other, I guess the last thing to note is that you can create void forms. So you could totally uh, then go in and do all the same commands to actually create void within your solid forms. So that, again, like adds a whole other level of complexity and possibility to your design process so that is cool alright so let's go ahead and close this now we played around in the sandbox and no and now we'll open up this guy okay so what we're gonna do with all that information we just learned uh, it's kind of something that's probably not that exciting but we're going to create the transfer of all this load here to the structure itself. Uh, I don't know if my structural engineer is going to be very happy with me at the moment. and I know he's not going to be, or she. It, it'll be actually the next step. They still might be not be happy with me, but oh well. This is just a, uh, we're just a proof of concept. Okay, model in place. Well, that's what we want to do, and for this one, I definitely want to use floors, because this will turn into some kind of floor that we could occupy. And we're going to say OK, and now we're going to hope for the best. Um, let's set the work plane as level 2, I think. And we will use extrude. What I'm going to do is just, I'm, I'm going to draw a, um, a rectangle that kind of takes up that entire space and say OK. I think that's what I wanted to do. Now I'm starting to question that.
Now we're going to make that a little thicker. So I'm going to actually put in negative 3. Sweet. Alright, now we're going to edit the extrusion. There, I'm going to edit this plane of the extrusion. I hope. Alright, let's go back. Mayday. Let's use a different tool. Let's use the blend tool. So what I'm trying to do, I should fill you in, uh, is I'm going to make a rectangle here and then I want that to taper back so that I have not as much thickness here, but back where it's going to need it near the columns is going to have uh, a lot more thickness. So it's, it's to, to really express the cantilever. So let's use the, yeah, let's use this. Um, we'll build a rectangle. On one side. In fact, I don't know if maybe that was going to be the top. And then we'll build a rectangle inside. I wish I could offset that. Okay. It's great. Um, I'm going to go down with that. Okay. Alright, I think the only thing we really want to do from here is just edit the top so that it, it it's kind of in line with the, uh, the column. So it might be easier to go to the uh, to one of these other levels and we will edit the top even though that's really the base. And now we'll just put this in the exact kind of placement. So, using MV, I'm going to try to move. Nope, never mind. I'm just going to move this incrementally until I get exactly where I want it. Does that look good? That looks pretty good. And that will look good. Alright, now let's take a look at it. Alright, now, the, our problem is that we want this space to be like amazing and right now I've just kind of completely cut off this form anything spatial up here from down below so one last step I think would be to create a void form that's going to cut through this so let's go back to level 2 and let's draw that void form to be essentially inside of the atrium. I'm using my keystrokes just to move that incrementally. I think that looks pretty good. We'll do that. Now let's go back to 3D view. Pull that through the object to make sure that it intersects. Finish model, and now we have the full transfer to our columns. Probably got kind of impossibly thin there. May need to tweak a few places so it actually comes out to the right place. But besides that, we got it done. Uh, I'll tweak these on my own time. All right, thanks, guys.